In this section, I want to show you some different studies uh, that you can work along with me and we can really address some of the tricky and sometimes subtle, not so subtle areas of the body and just things that generally I feel are good to practice. So uh, these are things I practice daily now, but then also I, I want to look at it in a way of if you're a, a younger artist, more aspiring, what are the things I could tell somebody that I wish I would have practiced sooner? Uh, so this particular study, I want to start with the spine. And so we're going to put a line going, you know, getting that S hook of the spine in place and a bend. Okay, something like this. So there's that noticeable S hook to the, the spine. This will be the neck area at the very top. And so what I want you to do here is get in the three masses. So the torso. Remember, it's got to be oriented with a bit of a tilt. If you, uh, if you need a little bit of assistance with creating the tilt, then go ahead and use the primitive first. Something like that. I'm going to jump past this and go ahead and introduce the, the oval with the divides of the uh, shape of the ribs there. Something like this. And then likewise for the pelvis, if you need a little bit of assistance getting that tilt visually in place, you can use the primitive, something like this. You're going to see probably very little of that top plane change, but you can get that, that tilt and orientation. Shoulder will be roughly in here somewhere. So for the pelvis, I'm actually going to bring this back. So I want the, I'm going to draw a couple versions for you real quick so that you get the idea of what I'm going for here. So I want the look that the pelvis is twisted back towards our view a little bit more like this. So this would be our center line. There's that floating underwear. So if, if you were to notice that this top one, the shoulder opening would be here. So there's a very distinct difference in twist and orientation that we're going to go for on this one. Uh, the other way that you can think about this, if that uh, floating underwear is too complex for you and it's not looking right, just remember that you can first establish the primitive of this area, something like that, okay? And just remember, each time you adjust any plane of this in a different orientation, uh, you know, obviously the rest has to follow. So if you adjust this plane, you have to adjust everything else uh, proportionately or by, you know, connectedly or whatever. But Again, you can easily transition and shift that if you need to. Uh, I think that's actually about right. Uh, probably a little bit more of a tilt away. So I'm going to go back to the initial starting point. I'm going to bring that back to about here. So I don't want to twist it too far where it seems entirely unnatural. And so I'm going to convert this to the pelvis shape and the floating underwear opening for the body up here let me see if we can convert that back to the initial shape that and again I, I generally will freehand this in uh, but that took practice so don't rush it you'll know when that time is get a, a nice sense of comfort with drawing it uh, in the basic primitive way if that feels better for you both what feels right over time you will jump to that next level so so now I can put the opening for the shoulder again I said that's up here really getting a uh, you know some twist in this so this would be the side of the body okay this would be the front can't see that cross section because the body's going to be turned away okay so now let's go ahead and attach the head I want the head to be facing away. So something like this for our primitive head shape. Ear back here. I feel like that's a little too much of a profile. I want to turn it away even further. So I'm going to go back. about here and what I want to think about to do this is I have to get more of the 
the back of the cranium kind of figured out and then bring that oval that basically implies the side plane change of the head that needs to be brought over here more just use the ear as a placeholder the more you bring the ear towards the front of the face then the more that head is turned away right because the profile of the face is going to uh, get closer and closer to the ear as that head turns away uh, just like if you were looking at the back of somebody it would look like the ear is basically right against the, the front plane of the face. You really see that back connection point of the ear and the hair would kind of overtake a lot of the rest of the, you wouldn't see any of the facial features, you'd just see the uh, line change of the side of the face. So it's, it's all about getting that ear in the right place. And then you're also gonna change the uh, look and shape of the jawline. So pay special attention to those areas. Okay, and I'm not gonna worry about drawing the neck yet. I'm just gonna kind of connect across this way for now. Okay, so there we go. So we've got this idea going, uh, a little bit of a connection point, and really the, the spine would be way underneath there, but so this doesn't represent the spine. Think of this more as just a line for the back of the neck. But we've got those three main masses kind of working. We've got some twists and orientation uh, differences going on. Uh, so now what I want to do is I, I really wanted to show you a couple things in this particular pose. Uh, one of which is that the body gets way more expressive when we do turn these. Uh, that's the main thing. But also we're going to get into uh, areas like the back and the pelvis. Uh, specifically, you know, areas like the deltoid, which are tricky from different angles. Uh, and those are things that escape a lot of us and they require a lot of practice. So what I want to do here is show you that if we bring this arm up, so we've got the delt up here, we've got the arm coming out away from the body, and we'll just get the back of the arm here. So I'll just drop in a cylinder really, that'll be the best way. I don't want to jump too far into the anatomy yet. So we get the back of the arm, elbow will be in here somewhere. And so we've got an arm out like this, and then on the back I want to show what happens to the, um, the spine of scapula. Okay, so this is gonna be a very important area of the body for us to study, very important bony landmark. And it does so much for, for a lot of different poses. It's really great for, for females uh, and males as well, but, but a lot of times males, the muscles will overtake the look of the spine. Now, it, it helps you to place the trapezius uh, really well. Um, but you know, we'll get into that. We'll get into different examples and what to look for in different instances. But in this particular one, the, the scapula is very noticeable and it does a lot. It's a, it's a really big placeholder for getting the back drawn in correctly. So as we connect some of this, I'm just gonna put a little bit of curvature for the lower, uh, the lower back. I would say the lower lumbar, but we're starting to see more of the front this is more of a perimeter, so this could almost be more the oblique from this, this viewpoint. Uh, but if the pelvis was turned away, this would be our lower lumbar and our um, you know, lower back muscles, and we'll get into those in detail as well. So from here, as we work down, you get a little bit of the lat, like this. And so this area back here gets a little bit tricky. What I like to do is find the center, if you can see it, and again, that's another uh, big placeholder. So I'm gonna get in rather early. I'm gonna erase back some of these construction lines for you. And then from the center line, I like to you know figure out how much of this other side are we gonna see. So a really kind of quick and easy way to get a back to look better on your illustration and more dimensional is to show uh, from an angle like this is, is to show the separation down the middle from that spine and then a little bit of the other side so that shows that there's a twist there and a lot of times that's something that gets missed so again I want to do some studies where I try to point out areas that we often overlook um, and, and then we flatten out our characters because we we just don't incorporate a certain area like this. So 
Now the other spine um, of scapula and the other uh, shoulder blade or, or scapula gets lost over here a bit. You know, the area on this side is very narrow. There's not a lot of room for definition. We know that if we were to look straight on, the two spines of the scapula come down like this. That gives us a look of the trapezius. You get kind of something like this. You get a little diamond of separation back there. The trapezius kind of dip in around the shoulder blades and those other muscles we'll get into. But So it does something like this. It's a really shorthand method. Uh, but it's, you know, knowing that's one thing, but then when you go to draw uh, a more steep angle, it's, some of that gets lost and you have to sometimes be a bit more subtle. Uh, you can't force in all the information that you know, and that's something we traditionally want to do in the beginning is, you know, we learn all this uh, anatomy and these muscles, and then we go to implement them and we force them into a view that they otherwise don't get seen in. And that's where your studies are very important. So we just have to sometimes pull back from what we know and uh, less is more, sometimes that applies. So we'll get the breast kind of sitting against the, uh, the rib cage there. We'll get the other perimeter shape. You know, the twist is occurring here. We know the navel is about in the midsection, so we'll place that right about there. Got the hips right here. So just like that, we've got a fair amount of this worked in. Remember to establish the neck as, as a curve. Not, you know, you don't want to stack the head right on top of the body. I think we've talked about that a, a few times, but I'll keep reiterating that as well. Use some nice curves there. And so just like that, we've got some construction in place. We've overlaid some aspects of the anatomy. Uh, we're, we're focusing on some specific areas that require a bit more knowledge and study. Uh, so I want to refine this a bit more with you and talk more about it. Let's stop here and head over to our next lesson.